you're under attack. Whether you know it or not, every hour of every day, thousands of rogue actors are attacking your Internet of Things network, checking IP addresses, probing your ports, testing your security. If your system isn't designed with the highest levels of security in place, sooner or later, someone will get through. And when they do, it's lights out. Here's the problem. In an IoT system, there is a process running somewhere in the cloud that controls your Internet of Things nodes. That process sends commands to the nodes and receives status information. The problem is that without adequate security, any attacker can pretend to be that process. If they're successful, they own your network. They control it, make it do what they want it to do, and possibly wreck physical havoc in the real world. It doesn't have to be that way. With Maxim Integrated Secure Authenticators, you can be certain that your traffic, and only your traffic, gets through to your IoT products. Hackers will hack, but without the secret keys, their attempts to break into your system will utterly fail. Let's see how that works. The heart of the authentication system is the DS2476 Deep Cover Secure Coprocessor and the DS28C36 Deep Cover Secure Authenticator. These parts have one job, to verify the authenticity of messages received from the cloud and to generate signatures to guarantee the authenticity of messages it sends. They generate and check signatures using the most powerful security algorithms specified by the United States National Institute of Standards and Technology. And they do all this in a 3mm 6-pin package. The best way to get to know them is with Maxim's reference design, the Max RefDes 155. The 155 reference design has three parts, a shield board that contains a DS2476 coprocessor, a temperature measurement sensor module with a DS28C36 authenticator, and a MAX32600 embed microcontroller board. Just snap the pieces together and install the demo code. The download address is in the box. When you power on the board, you'll see this welcome screen. Press one of the buttons below the display and the screen will display a web ID. You'll need that for the next step. Now go to this web address and click on the picture of the Max Ref Des 155. That will take you to a login page where you can type the web ID that is being displayed. Next, you'll be welcomed with a screen that shows the object temperature, the ambient temperature, a communications log, and a few controls. Now, Go back to the board and press the left click button. On the screen you'll see the Wi-Fi SSID and password. These should match your Wi-Fi network. If they don't, see the quick start card to learn how to change the network values. When you press the left click button again, the 155 will connect to your Wi-Fi network and to the Maxim server. Looks simple. But behind the scenes, the Maxim server has authenticated the MaxRef Des-155. It cryptographically challenged the board and received a satisfactory response. And that happens with every message. If the messages can't be authenticated, they are rejected. And the secret keys used by the board exist only on the board. And the secret keys used by the server exist only at that server and nowhere else on the planet and deducing the secret keys from analyzing the communications is, as they say, computationally infeasible. Now, let's send some messages. On the computer, click the Read Ambient Temperature button. What happens next is the server sends a command and a challenge to the 155. The message contains a nonce, a number randomly generated and used only one time and only for this message. The 155 reads the temperature from the sensor node and places the temperature and the nonce in a message, signs the message, and returns the whole thing to the server. Now notice, an imposter can't do this, even if someone has eavesdropped on a prior message. 
just replaying that message won't work. The nonce value in the prior message is different, and if the imposter attempts to substitute the new nonce for the old one in the message, the signature is different, and the imposter can't generate a valid signature because they don't have the private key. We've seen how to read authenticated data from the 155. Now let's send a command and see how that works. On the computer, click the slider labeled Enable Laser Module. On the sensor node, you'll see a green light turn on. That means the targeting laser is enabled. Simple enough. But in the background, the server sent an authenticated message to the 155 to enable the laser. The 155 in turn sent an authenticated message to the sensor node to enable the laser. Now notice, there is no microcontroller on the sensor node. The DS28C36 on the sensor node has two GPIO pins that can be commanded on or off via authenticated messages from the 155. Push the big red button on the sensor node and you can see the targeting laser turn on. Now, so far, we've seen simple messages transmitted and received between a server in the cloud and the 155 on your desk connected to a Wi-Fi network. But what about bulk data? The DS2476 Deep Cover Secure Coprocessor can authenticate bulk data too. To demonstrate this, just click the Secure Download button in the upper right corner of the window. This will let you send images to the 155 to be displayed on its screen. Select an image, click Download, and in a few moments you'll see the image appear on the screen. In the background, the server placed the requested image in a file and signed the file with its private key. The server then transmitted the file using standard protocols to the 155. The 155 received the file, verified the signature with the server's public key, and then sent the image to the screen. But what if the file isn't valid? To check that case, clear the valid checkbox on the select image screen, and now the server will corrupt one byte in the file. When you send the file now, the 155 will tell you the received data was not authentic. There's so much more to tell you about Maxim Secure Authenticators, but now that you've seen the kit in action, the next move is yours. Your IoT system needs protecting, and now you have the tools.